اهلا وسهلا بيكم كل متابعينا متابعين تلفزيون اليوم السابع الحقيقه النهارده احنا معانا تغطيه مختلفه ومهمه جدا في الحقيقه برضو كلب بلدي طلع قمه الهرم الاكبر والفيديو بقى فايرل والحقيقه ان العالم كله مش في مصر بس اتكلم عن الفيديو لدرجه ان الصحف الكبيره كمان اتكلمت عليه مش مش اشخاص بس واحنا معانا حصريا مارشال موشي صاحب اللقطه اللي قلبت الدنيا وهو امريكي اتليت امريكي وادفنشرر هنا في مصر عشان ايفنت خاص بالكايت سيرفينج اكشلي ف هيبقى معانا مارشال دلوقتي هلو مارشال ام فاين هاو ار يو ام جود ثانك يو ويلكم تو ايجيبت First of all, welcome to Egypt. I hope you stay. You're having fun here. So uh, Thank you. Yeah, it's been amazing. Yes, good. Uh, I'd like to start with you. I'd like to to introduce yourself and what you're doing here in Egypt. Of course. Uh, well, my name is Marshall Mosher. I am an American adventure sports athlete and paramotor pilot, which is why I'm here in Egypt. And we have a bunch of uh, friends from America, as well as from all over the world, and a bunch of Egyptian friends that have come together to fly the pyramids. And uh, we just finished up that event yesterday and decided to add on some kite surfing to the end of the trip uh, through Big Day as a kite surfing company in Hergada. So we just jumped on the boat uh, yesterday, and we're here on the Red Sea for a week of kite surfing now. Okay, this is not your first time here in Egypt, obviously. No, this is my fourth or fifth time. Okay. I've been coming to fly the pyramids every year since they started it about four years ago. Okay, it's a regular event for you here in Egypt. You're enjoying it, obviously. I love it. Well, paragliding and kite surfing are two of my favorite sports, and okay. flying over the pyramids and kite surfing the Red Sea is about the best combination I can think of for those two amazing activities. It's one of the best places I've ever uh, flown and kited uh, is here in Egypt and everywhere I've been around the world. Okay, I'd like to jump to the viral video that you captured, actually. Um, tell us about the shot of the dog on the top of the pyramids. How did you see it? How did you adapt with it? Well, it definitely wasn't what we were expecting. So I've been coming to Egypt to paramotor over the pyramids for the past uh, four years. And we've been really amazed by the opportunity that we get to fly the pyramids and to share this experience with the world. So for the past four years, I've been really passionate about using this opportunity as a uh, a goal for people to learn how to paraglide uh, to come out to Egypt to get to see the pyramids from the sky. But in the past four years, we've never seen what we saw this time, uh, which kind of caught us off guard, uh, a dog running around on the top. Um, I've seen dogs climbing up the sides of the pyramid during a tour. Um, I didn't know how high they go. and It seemed like they went all the way to the top. But we've never seen anything on the top before. So it was pretty surprising uh, and and funny to see something running around on the top. We're not allowed to get that close to the top of the pyramids. We want to make sure that we maintain a good distance for safety for both us and the preservation of the pyramids in case we were to have an issue. So we couldn't really tell exactly what was running around on top. Um, I assumed it was a dog. One pilot said he thought it was a mountain lion. Um, but when we it's zoomed in on the footage, right? we could tell it was a dog that was running around and, and barking at something. One pilot said it was barking at birds. Um, I think it was barking at us because dogs often chase us, actually, as we fly by or as we're launching. Um, and it was it was funny to see that there was uh, a dog who climbed up to see the, the view with us. I could see how surprised you are. Actually, actually, right now, I could see how surprised you are so far. Uh, so tell me about your reaction. At, at the same exact time, how did you, I don't know, how did you say to your colleagues in the airplane that, hey, there is a dog down there or, or what? Well, we, we, it's kind of hard to talk to each other while we're flying, obviously. We, okay. we do have videos, but uh, not if we have the radio. I, I think they're not allowed actually here in Egypt, so it, it's hard to communicate with each other. Um, but, you know, we, we shake our legs as a way of waving because, you know, we're using our hands to, to steer the paraglider. So we shake our legs to get each other's attention. That's kind of our version of a wave while flying. Uh, so we were doing that, and I think some people saw it, some people didn't. But when we landed, we were all talking about it, joking about how it was so funny to see a dog on top and, and to figure out what it actually was. Um, but for me, flying over the pyramids isn't 
an easy thing to do. It's it's a goal that we've worked towards um, for for a long time to learn how to pair a motor and to be able to come all the way for us halfway around the world to see this incredible view. Uh, so it's really special for us to be able to see you know the sunrise from the the perspective of the top of the pyramids and i was thinking how cool it was that that dog had also worked really hard to climb the entire pyramids to see that view with us as well so it was kind of fun to share that moment with it yes it's actually a, a great opportunity for you that you have captured uh, did you see the reactions on the shot from all over the world from egyptians i did yeah i was blown away with how much uh, excitement there was over this dog on top of the pyramids, which was equally as as funny as it was a bit frustrating, actually, because I've been coming to this event for years uh, to inspire people to learn how to paraglide, this incredible sport that adds you know, so much inspiration and freedom to our lives in order to have this moment of flying over the pyramids. And I thought that Flying over the pyramids itself was decently no noteworthy uh, and newsworthy, the fact that we're allowed to do this. But at the end of the day, what actually got attention to this incredible opportunity is a dog on top of the pyramid, which I think is hilarious and amazing. Uh, and I'm really glad to be a part of being able to have some lighthearted and inspiring news that hopefully will encourage people to learn how to paraglide and come fly with us next year, uh, or even come fly as a tandem. Um, a tandem means you fly with another pilot, so you don't have to know how to fly. Okay, when did you capture the video? Did you capture the video and just posted it on the same time, or you just tried to edit it, do anything with it? Um, not much editing. Uh, I, I just, added it with a clip from my Insta360 X4 camera that uh, shows, it shows my perspective while I'm flying with the clip so that people could see not only our perspective of what we saw with the dog, but also see us as we're flying to kind of get a better understanding of it. And I posted that Monday nights after um, our first day at the Pyramid. We fly Monday and Tuesday. We always fly at sunrise because the air in the morning is as smooth uh, as it's going to get all day. So. We, we saw it on Monday. Uh, we posted it. I really didn't think that it would get uh, much traction, actually. And then when I woke up in the morning, it already had several million views. So that morning, as soon as we got to the helipad, our launch site at the pyramids, um, I made a video about how we were going to go back up and see if we can find the dog, if it's still there, because a bunch of people were worried that it might be stuck up there. Of course, I knew down um, but we we went to go back and find it the next morning that was our first thing that we wanted to do uh, we did not see it there on Tuesday so that evening I made another video about going to look for it uh, which also uh, got several million views um, and then after that I was actually put in touch with someone who had posted another video on Instagram of a dog coming down the pyramids that actually looked very similar to the dog that we saw on top now who knows if it's the same dog i'm sure multiple dogs climb to the top because there are hundreds of, of dogs who live out there and a lot of them seem to like to run around on the pyramid um but uh when i got that video from uh lauren we don't know if it was the same dog but um it's cool to see that it has a pretty pretty awesome home okay obviously this is the dog hobby to just climb up and down on the rim it's so uh Actually, my question, you answered it, the next question, you answered it within your talking about, did you think or did you thought actually that this video would win like this viral uh, international uh, website, journals, everything are just writing and posting about the video. Did anyone just call you, try to get contact with you or still not yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I've had people reaching out from all over the world, from uh, news publications everywhere, from friends who saw the video. Uh, of course, I, I posted the initial video, so everyone who's been following me on social were the first people to see it, and then everyone uh, sharing it around in um, uh, the media and on other Instagram accounts kind of grew the, the interest in it. So uh, I've had a lot of people reach out asking about the dog, and 
attempting to get a dog for a long time now um, because I, I love adventure sports and using the power of adventure sports to, um, you know, to transform our, our lifestyle. And a dog is really goes hand in hand with that. Uh, so I, I actually may go back to Cairo to see if I can find the dog or really any dog who needs a home uh, to hopefully raise awareness for the, uh, the local dog who are there and maybe uh, have a dog I can bring on some of my adventures. So we'll see if, uh, if I can find it. Okay. I, and now I, I, could I would like to ask you, actually, if you find the dog, are you going to take him home with you? Back to a, a I, country? I would love to if I can. I hear yeah. it's a pretty hard process to bring uh, an animal back to America from anywhere else in the world. Um, but there is a way to do it. So if, if I can find the dog and if it, if it needs a home, as long as I'm not taking it away from a good home already, uh, then I, I think I'm going to try and, and bring it back with me. Okay. Do you think that the dog is your luck charm now? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's funny you say that because I had a very similar looking dog in Turkey following me uh, over 50 kilometers across a hike and fly paragliding race. It's a type of endurance uh, ultra marathon where we run and we paraglide. And there was a dog that followed me uh, almost the whole way on one of the days in that race. And I was I was wanting to actually take that back with me as well. Uh, but uh, uh, he actually was part of a farm and had a tag. He already had a home, but it was very similar to the movie that just came out um, called um, Arthur the King about the dog who follows the guy in the adventure race. And that day was actually one of my best days in the race. So I think, I think uh, adventurous dogs showing up is definitely a good one. Okay. Dogs following you is, uh, is your lucky thing, actually, nowadays. So, good for you, actually. Right. <laughs> okay, I'd like and to ask you. Okay. Back in the U.S., takes his dog paragliding with him. So, there's a way to make a dog harness that you can actually fly with your dog. So, that'd be fun to come back next year and, and paraglide the dog over the pyramids. Okay, I think that you have a long journey when you uh, come back from... Uh, uh, to just find the dog and try to take him home with you. It's uh, going to be a long process, uh, I guess. I, Finding it, it's, searching for him in, in the streets of the pyramids. Okay, I would like to ask you, did you visit any other places in Egypt aside of the pyramids and uh, Garda'a or just those two people? Just this two yeah. places, actually. We did. So the Sky One event is actually three different locations. The first location is the Fayum Oasis, where we okay. paraglide there on the first day because it's a much easier and uh, very open, safe place to paraglide with no obstacles. So it's great for people to practice and warm up there. Then we go to the pyramids for two days, and then we go to Luxor for two days, um, Karnak Temple and some of the other popular sites in Luxor. And now the whole group is in Soma Bay, paramotoring the Red Sea. Uh, but a few of us who like to kite surf uh, decided to skip out on the Soma Bay flying and come to um, uh, Tuila to kite surf on a big day's kite safari with my buddy Marco, who was also one of the pilots flying on um, on the day we flew the pyramid. So that's where we are currently at Tuila Island. But yeah, we've got a chance. Yeah. Okay, I, I'd like to know which one of the places is your most exciting one? Well, I mean, look at the background right now. It doesn't, it doesn't beat that. Okay, nothing beats it, that. Uh, okay. This is one of my favorite places in the world, um, out at the islands right off the coast of Pergata. Um, it's a really, really beautiful place for both kite surfing and scuba diving. So I think this is my favorite. But paragliding over the pyramids is definitely the most beautiful and just magical experience I've ever had while paramotoring. So that's definitely um, that's definitely up there. And this year we actually got the opportunity to paramotor at night for uh, apparently what was the biggest nighttime air show uh, in Cairo. 
and we had our paramotors all lit up with lights. The pyramids were lit up with the, uh, the spotlight on the ground, and that was really special as well. Okay, this year in Egypt is so different from the other years that you came here in Egypt. So when you come back, when you went back to uh, United States, what would you tell your friends and family about this trip exactly? This trip especially, actually. <laughs> Well, everyone's asking about the dog, um, so I'll definitely give them an update on that. Uh, but about this trip specifically, um, I'll, I'll tell them that being able to fly over one of the greatest monuments ever built in the history of humanity is an experience that is really hard to describe. Um, it really has to be experienced, and it is one of the magical uh, one of the most magical moments I've ever had uh, in my life while flying. شكرا ليكم كل متابعينا متابعين تلفزيون اليوم السابع ده كان حوارنا مع مارشال مشير المصور الأمريكي والأثليت الأدفنشر اللي صور لقطة الكلب البلدي اللي طلعت فاير مش بس في مصر في العالم كله واتكلم عنه كل العالم بعديها شكرا. 